Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're well, hope you're doing well, hope you're safe. Uh, so today is Landscape Photography Tips episode 8. So yeah, I haven't done one of these for a while, but um, how things are right now with the pandemic and everything being locked down, I thought it was a great opportunity to dive into a video that I've been wanting to do for quite a while, but I've been put off because there's already quite a lot of content online about this particular subject. But when I've been doing a little bit of research, I realised that the way I do things is slightly different. Uh, so I thought it'd be great actually to get stuck into this video, uh, deep dive into how I go about it. So the topic is focusing and more specifically where to focus or where I focus when I'm shooting landscape photographs. So there's three popular ways, if you like, of uh, focusing for landscape photography. These are hyperfocal distance focusing, uh, focusing in a third of the way into the scene and also focusing to infinity. Now, I don't really use these techniques. I've got my own little way of doing things and yeah, it's just the way I like to do things. And so the reason for this is because when I'm out shooting, I like to, you know, just enjoy the environment. I like to be uh, engaged with the, the scene in front of me. I want to feel like I'm experiencing that. I don't really want to be sort of looking into the back of the camera all the time, really thinking about settings and stuff. I just want to enjoy the moment, get out there, take the image and enjoy the process. But that's not to say that those are the methods are wrong and, and they're not. They're just, you know, personal preferences. And, you know, if you've been doing any of those and you're enjoying doing it, then, you know, just stick with that. And let's dive into a bit more about the three things, the three ways of focusing that I just mentioned. So first up, we've got hyperfocal distance focusing. So the definition according to Wikipedia, because obviously Wikipedia explains things way better than I can, the hyperfocal distance is the closest distance at which a lens can be focused while keeping objects at infinity acceptably sharp. When the lens is focused at this distance, all objects at distances from half the hyperfocal distance out to infinity will be acceptably sharp. So the problem for me is, to be honest, hyperfocal distance focusing, I found just incredibly diff difficult to comprehend. I've, I have really struggled with it, to be honest, and I've tried it and, you know, spent a bit of time practicing it and I just found it really complicated. And I think, you know, when you've got to pull an app out and figure out distances and everything, it just seemed to take me out of the moment. And quite often with landscape photography, obviously we've got fleeting moments of light and we want to try and capture those moments. And I just felt that I was thinking too much about my camera settings and it was detracting my mind away from really what was important. And that is, you know, experiencing what I've got in front of me. So I decided early doors to actually bin hyperfocal distance focusing off. I wasn't very successful at it. But that doesn't mean to say that it doesn't work because it does, and I know it does, and it's probably the most uh, reliable method if you can really get it nailed down, um, but it just isn't for me. So next up is focusing a third into your scene. I do think this works well in a lot of circumstances, and it's easy to figure out, especially if you have your rule of thirds grid showing on your LCD. Simply focus a third in and adjust your aperture until your foreground and your background are acceptably sharp. Next we've got infinity focusing and for this method we are focusing the lens to infinity and selecting an aperture that allows us to get our near foreground elements in focus. Again, this method works well in certain circumstances. It does have its problems though. Some lenses may focus beyond infinity like my Fuji 23mm f1.4 and very few lenses now have the hard stops of old manual lenses. I've never found the focus by wire infinity stops to be 100% accurate either, but the, again, that's perhaps just me. Problems with infinity focus have been ongoing for decades. In fact, the reason for Canon making their zoom lenses white back in the 70s was to reduce surface heat from the sun, meaning less expansion in the fluorite lens elements, which could change the point in which the lens focuses at infinity. So although this method can work well, I think it depends on what kit you're using and how well you know and can rely on that particular piece of kit or lens. Those three methods I talked about are all fantastic and I urge everyone to go out there and give all three of them a try and just figure out which one works best for you and the kit that you're using. Um, but I tend not to use those methods very often. So how do I focus if I don't use those methods? Well, to be honest, the approach that I take is I don't tend to think about focusing until right at the end. In fact, when I'm putting an image together, when I'm making a shot and composing a shot, I find composition and light way more important than anything else. And it's those areas that I'm really concentrating on when I'm putting an image together. So I focus on piecing all those little jigsaw pieces of the jigsaw together, trying to get the composition nailed down. 
And when I have everything locked down on the tripod, my composition set up, then I'll start to think about focus. And generally what I'm looking to do is to find uh, a subject within my image or something that my eye is drawn towards first within the composition. And it will be that that I focus on and then work out my depth of field from there. Uh, with focusing on the subject or the main focal point, really that's where your eye is drawn. And I like to try to make my images as natural as possible. And quite often if you're looking at a scene and your eye is drawn to a particular point in the scene, say a third of the way in or something like that, then with your own eyes naturally you, you will lose some depth of field as you know your eyes wander off into the distance because you're focusing nearer to to that part of the image you know it's, it's the way our eyes work we don't see everything sharp from front to back but that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't want your images to appear sharp from front to back but for me i want to make sure that what i'm drawn to first is the point that i'm focusing on because i want that to be tack sharp i want the eyes to be drawn to that and i want that to be tack sharp i don't really necessarily want to be focusing on the mountains say in the background and then maybe having my depth of field getting uh, softer, if you like, working towards the foreground, I want to focus on what my eye is drawn towards. So that's what I do. And I'll just talk you through some methods in which I go about doing that. So for example, this shot, I've focused on the rocks here in the foreground. As to me, this is the most important part when looking at this scene with my own eyes. I can see the rocks are tack sharp and the mountains naturally fall off very slightly. This is how it appeared when standing in the field looking at the scene and this was the look I was aiming to capture at the time. Focusing on the rocks I then selected an aperture to obtain sharp focus from front to back. So by choosing the most important area of the image and focusing on that I'm able to select an aperture that obtains acceptably sharp focus throughout the scene. For this image focusing on the rocks f8 got everything sharp, my foreground was only 3 feet away. For this image again, I focused on the rocks and selected an aperture where everything was tack sharp. My point of focus is the point where the eye is drawn to first. For this image with no foreground at all, I simply focused on the mountains and everything was sharp at f5.6. It's such a simple way of focusing and requires little thought to be honest and that really suits me in the way that I like to shoot. So a few other things to think about if you were looking to get sharp photos and that's physically how I, uh, I focus. So obviously you've got the, uh, the manual ring on the front of the lens and I manually focus all of my landscape photos, but I tend not to use the focus ring. What I tend to use is the AFL button, the auto focus lock button. So with this lens, for example, it's got a clutch mechanism, but if I disengage the clutch mechanism, I can use the AFL button. So I'll move the focus point to the, uh, the point that I wanna focus on. I press in the AFL button, you might just be able to see the button there, and that will lock focus on that particular part of the scene. And then that is my focus locked. I can take as many images as I want with that, and it, the focus is gonna remain on that point. So if I'm for exposure blending or something like that, my focus is not going to change and I think this is quite nice it's a quick way of focusing you can quickly move your focus points it's sort of a cross between you know auto focus and manual focus but obviously you can tweak that as well using the focus ring if you need to I also use focus peaking as well which is excellent and that really helps you get your depth of field essentially focus peaking um, you set uh, like a highlight edge if you like to the sharpest parts of the image and this has several different colors I think red blue and I think white and it will put a little edge detail of color around the things that are sharp so as you uh, increase the f number or make your aperture smaller you'll see that the red focus peaking will spread out through the the plane of focus the sharpness throughout your images as you go from a, a wide aperture to a narrow aperture so you can really see what is sharp in your image and this is uh, incredibly helpful for manually focusing especially if you've got if you maybe if you've got a shot with a very shallow depth of field it can be incredibly helpful too and i use it you know a lot so focal length is a big factor of how much of the scene we can actually get in focus the plane of focus that's acceptably sharp will become smaller the closer we get to our foreground elements. The same is said when we're using a telephoto lens and we are zoomed into the scene. If we have near foreground elements and distant mountains, the scene becomes compressed and the depth of field that is acceptably sharp very narrow. 
I've done a full video on focal length and I'll leave the video in the description for you if you want to check that out. So say we're using a focal length of 12 millimeters, we should easily be able to get everything in focus from front to back and depending on how close we are to our foreground subject, sometimes this can be achieved with a relatively wide aperture, say f5.6. The more zoomed in we are and the closer we get to our foreground, the more difficult it will be to obtain sharpness from front to back. Here we have three options. One, accept that some parts of the image will be out of focus. Two, use a very narrow aperture. And three, to focus stack. Option one is a good option if an out of focus area is something that you're looking to add in the image from a creative point of view. But then if not, I would definitely choose option two or three. Option two is to increase the F number or make the aperture narrower. This will increase the depth of field. You need to do your homework here though. Every lens has a sweet spot and more often than not, when a lens goes beyond say F8 or F11, we'll start to see a significant reduction in image quality. This is due to the lens diffraction. Essentially, this happens when the light is passed through a very narrow hole. The image will tend to get softer. So I strongly advise you know, testing out all of your lenses at home. Just do some tests in your garden. Find out where your sweet spots are on the lens because it can really make a big difference to the image quality of your final photograph. So yeah, I've done this with all of my lenses. I don't tend to want to go beyond f11 to be honest and if possible f8. Um, beyond that I start to see a significant amount of softness with the lenses that I use. So what happens if we, <laughs> we, know we, we need to go beyond f11 to get sharp sharpness from front to back? Well that's when I start to focus stack my images and I've done a whole video on focus stacking that talks you through two different ways that you can focus stack your image and I highly recommend check that out if you're, if you're looking to you know, learn more about that. I'll leave the link for that one in the description below so you can go and check that one out as well. To conclude, my method for obtaining focus goes like this. Number one, first compose the shot. Number two, focus on the main subject or where the eye is drawn to first. Three, set my aperture to obtain sharpness where I need it. Be sure not to go above f8 or f11. Number four, if front to back sharpness is not achievable, then I revert to focus stacking. So on rare occasions, uh, when I'm not 100% sure if my uh, first image is gonna work and I don't wanna focus stack, but I think I'm about right. Um, I've said this before, you know, when you're hiking and you've done a long hike and it's freezing cold, like I get, I get a lot of sort of water buildup in my eyes and uh, my eyes are not as good as they used to be either. And looking at the rear LCD screen, especially when there's a bright light, sometimes, you know, your confidence can dwindle a little bit and you can start to think, have I got everything in focus and this is a great photograph I've got here in front of me and I don't want to mess, mess this up. I want to make sure I've got this shot. I just hedge my bets a little bit and use a few backups. So I'll take a shot of my near foreground element and then I'll focus a third of the way in and then I'll focus on the background as well. And there'll be three backup shots should my main uh, com composed shot not work out. I've got those three just to, just as backup and just as a fail safe, just to make sure you know I've actually got the image. And worst case scenario, I could actually focus stack those three images together as well if need be. But I don't do it very often. It's just when I'm not sure. So yeah, generally in the winter when I'm cold or I've just done a long hike and my eyes are watering. But yeah, um, it's something that I highly recommend if you're not 100% sure. There'd be nothing worse than uh, having fantastic light, a great sunset or something like that in the mountains. A big journey that you've travelled to get home and find you're not happy with the image because you haven't got front to back sharpness that you're hoping for. So yeah, highly recommend doing that and it's something that I do on occasion. So that was my thought process regarding focusing. Like I said, I like to keep things really easy and simple. I don't want to detract away from actually being out in the environment and enjoying just taking photos. So yeah, nice and simple with techniques. But I do urge you to give all of those techniques a go and see what works best for you. So if you're interested in seeing how I take the photographs, I'll leave a vlog up there for you to go and take a look at. Also, my website is over there. There's some free online courses on there too. They're available on Skillshare. And if you do go over, 
there's a two month free subscription as well. So you can learn lots and lots on Skillshare. There's hundreds of photography courses from some great photographers like Chris Burkhardt's one is fantastic. I highly recommend checking that out. Like I said, there's two months free if you wanna go over and sign up for that and you can cancel any time. So you can just go and watch loads of stuff. It's really, really highly recommended. And also the subscription button is over there. If you fancy hitting that subscribe button, that would be much appreciated. Okay guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So please drop us a comment, like, sub, and all that good stuff. And I will see you next time.